Hey everybody, I'm Eugene Driscoll. Welcome to Naval Gazing, the Valley Indie Vlogcast. This is another in my continuing series of interviews with men and women running for the board of aldermen in the city of Ansonia. And as you can probably read on your screen, joining me tonight are the fifth ward Democratic candidates, Mr. David Rhodes and Brian Perkins. Hey, David and Brian. Hey, how are you? How you doing, Eugene? I'm doing all right. So the first thing, and I've been leading this, uh, leading with this question with everybody I've had on so far, I don't know anything about Ansonia Wards. Where's the fifth ward? All right, well, the fifth ward consists of the area from Great Hill Road, which is on the Seymour line, comes down the Wakely Avenue corridor. It also takes a left down the Franklin Street corridor, up Jackson, over Howard, up Grove, and it, it's basically everything from there west. It ends right about Riverside Drive, right where Side the Yep. Gotcha. Do you have any idea how many people live within your ward? Well, right now, um, there's about, I, I believe, you know, we're looking at the new census numbers. A lot of people moved to Ansonia this year from New York with, uh, with COVID and everything. Um, I believe around 3,500 total. Oh, wow. Um, okay. Which should be representative for every ward as well. Mm -hmm. That's how the wards are cut up by, by population. 750 households or something like that uh something like that yeah it doesn't have to be exact i was just curious yeah, yeah. Uh, i should tell people this isn't scripted in any way it's just whatever comes into my head i ask okay. one thing that's always sort of disappointed me about uh some of the ansonia races the ward races specifically which is one of the reasons i'm glad we're having this conversation maybe more people will know it's happening uh is that the, the voter turnout tends to be sort of low uh in the wards like you'll see some somebody uh, win uh, an election by a, a small margin or just a couple of hundred votes what's your sense this year and this has to be i assume this is tough because there's no top of the ticket uh, uh race uh this year what's your sense and how are you sort of trying to overcome that hump of low voter voter turnout whoever well, wants to I, I guess i'll ask yeah. david Sorry. Well, I think you're going to see a larger than normal turnout uh, just on the basis of the last presidential election where a record number of voters came out. I think we're still riding that wave of people wanting to vote and make a difference. Now, it may be lower a little bit because there is no mayoral candidate on the Democrat side, but I think we're going to still see a pretty decent turnout. Mm -hmm. Brian, do you concur? Yeah, I believe so. You know, I think, you know, after talking with residents here in the Fifth Ward, and I've seen this all around town. You know, people are a lot more energized than they usually are when it comes to elections, municipal level anyway, um, this year as opposed to other years. I mean, you know, you look at the, the voter turnout from from two municipals ago, and like you said, you see people who are losing by just a few votes in like third ward, for example, that kind of thing. Um, but I feel like this year there's a lot more energy going. I, I know we're definitely working harder, and I know that our opponents are also working harder, which, um, you know, an increased voter turnout is always great in any regard. So I'm looking forward to that. All right, so now just some biographical information uh, about you gentlemen. I guess I'll start with Brian. Talk to me about uh, how long you've lived in Ansonia, where you went to high school, uh, what you've been up to the last few years. This is, I mean, I don't want you to talk for like the next 45 minutes, but give me, a, give me the, the, the uh, thumbnail version. No, absolutely. So I was born and raised in Ansonia. I went to Ansonia Public Schools. I'm an Ansonia High School graduate of 2015. Um, in 2016, I enlisted the United States Marine Corps. I was active duty for four years and three months. Uh, during that time, I did a deployment to Afghanistan. I, did, I was in Afghanistan actually uh, last year from January to May. Um, so I did the deployment to Afghanistan. I had to extend my contract to, to go there. So I stayed in for an additional three months. I got out in January of this year. And uh, here I am today. And I am now going to, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I'm also going no, to- no. I'm going to the University of Connecticut right now as well. Gotcha. Okay. So you're a college student. What are, what are you studying at UConn? Computer science and engineering. Okay. Thank you. And David, what's your background? How long have you lived in Ansonia? Uh, born and raised in Ansonia. The overwhelming majority was in the fifth ward. Um, I did live on the north end for about seven years. Um, product of the Ansonia public school system. I was a 1990 graduate of Ansonia High School. I was also the uh, one of the tri-captains on the state championship baseball team. I graduated from Southern Connecticut State University with a degree in marketing. Um, I've coached baseball in the town for about 20 years from T-ball all the way up through American Legion ball, as well as middle school and travel ball. Um, I retired from baseball coaching and now I, I concentrate, believe it or not, on a small business that I started making handmade soaps. Um, 
Oh, wow. When, when did that start? That's interesting. Uh, March. Oh, okay. Brand new thing. Yeah. In the middle of the pandemic, I'm not to get off subject. I was spending a lot of money online for, for all natural soaps. And then I got to pay double the cost in shipping. So I said, let me try making myself. So, yeah, maybe that's a future Valley Indy feature story there. Now, David, what, uh, what motivated you? I mean, one thing here is like, I know you guys, but I don't know you guys. I just know you from social media. Right. Mm-hmm. Which, which is like, I don't know, the more I'm on social media, the more I think like we, we let's all just stop using it. Uh, yeah. But David, what motivated you to make a run? I mean, I assume this is your first run for public office. Yes, it is. So um, what, what, what motivated you? You know, I, I love helping people. I used to tell my players that, you know, I'm a teaching coach. I don't care if we lose all our games, as long as you're learning something, making you a better person. So I love helping people. And since I don't coach anymore, um, I was told, why don't I put my energy into doing something for the community? So I said, you know what? Let me run for alderman. I could have give residents back their voice. I have a voice and uh, I get to work with a lot of great people and uh, see what we can do for the community. And then Brian, the same question to you, what motivated you to make a run for the board of aldermen just coming out of the Marine Corps? Yeah, absolutely. So you know, um, you know, when you're in the military, especially when I when I enlisted, you know, one of the things that I really looked at was doing something that was bigger than myself, you know, to be able to make a difference in my country um, and, and to really serve my serve my country in a way that that would make a difference. Um, and that's why I enlisted in the Marine Corps, because I knew the Marine Corps would be the best opportunity for me to do something like that. Returning home to Ansonia, my mindset really hasn't changed. It's at a, like a smaller scale now in terms of service, but I know that I can serve my community here. And that's something that I've been looking to do for a while now is, is continuing to serve. Um, and I feel like it's a good transition from serving the country to serving the community. And then uh, anybody I've ever interviewed who's ever run for local office always talks to me about going door to door, knocking on doors, how important that is. Although the theme this year so far in my interviews has been, well, nobody really seems to be home or they're not answering the door, which is, I don't, I don't know what's going on there, but are you two campaigning together? Is this like a, a Rhodes Perkins? Are you guys partners in this all the time? How's it work? Cause I've never run for office. Yeah. So um, we've been knocking on doors heavy. Um, we try to go together as much as we can. Um, we'll cover the same street. One has one side, one has the other. And if we get a chance to talk to somebody, we'll join them and, and say hello and introduce ourselves. Um, I just find it's much more productive. We're still covering the same amount of territory, but we're, you know, people get to meet both of us instead of one. And then, uh, Brian, what do you think, what are your issues? Like, what are you if I had asked you, what are the most important things happening uh, in Ansonia, what are your issues? So in terms of Ansonia as a whole, not just my ward, I think one of the biggest issues that's facing the city right now is uh, one, number one, education funding. You know, I, with ARPA coming through the American Rescue Plan Act, um, you know, we, we, we're seeing an influx in federal funding for, for schools, which is great. Um, but we really should be work, focusing on our schools more uh, at a municipal level, you know, making sure that you know, our schools are taken care of, making sure that our students are getting the best possible education and making sure that our teachers reflect the demographics of, of uh, Ansonia as well. That's important um, if we want to keep, um, you, know, you know, kids educated and give them a way that they can go ahead and um, learn from somebody. Um, it, it's just statistically shows that, that if there's teachers of the same demographic as the city, um, kids tend to do better in schools. So I think we should definitely be looking at something like that. Um, another thing for me that's important in Sonia right now is is just, I guess, the culture in terms of, of the way things are ran. I think one big issue is um, when you have full control of a board the way that we do right now in Sonia, given, um, you know, currently our, the Republicans do run the majority of the board of aldermen, um, they, they tend to, to favor the administration's ideas more and, and they don't seem to, uh, to give balance and give discourse, give, give um, constructive criticism to things that need constructive criticism on the board. Um, and, and that's why I'm running. And then, uh, David, the same question to you. What are your top issues? Uh, like Brian, I'm big on education. Um, I, I feel that if we invest in the children of the community, then they'll turn around when it's time and invest themselves back into the community. Um, you hopefully see a lot less houses for sale, uh, more tax coming in. So, you know, the children are the future and it's cliche, but it's, it's really true. Um, also, another thing I'm big on is the crime. Um, 
every year there's cars getting broken into or stolen and mm -hmm. You know, I'd like to find a way to try to minimize that as much as we can, whether it be large scale um, community watch programs uh, or what have you. Um, but it's going to take a giant effort from everybody involved. One follow up question. You both mentioned uh, education and I'll just play devil's advocate. Well, why not run for the Board of Education? Uh, if that's your top issue where you can have a direct say on budgets and hiring, or at least uh, an influence uh, uh, over the, the administration, school administration, why not run for the Board of Education? So in terms of the budgeting and the funds, um, the process for the budget in Estonia, it's the mayor, the Board of Apportionment Taxation, and the Board of Aldermen that approve the budget. So when you're talking about finances in terms of how much money that the schools can get, it's at the level of, of the Board of Aldermen, not the Board of Education. Um, in terms of in terms of the amount of money uh, that should be allocated to the schools, a bottom line a dollar amount. But what about in terms of you were talking about? You wanted uh, the hires to reflect the diversity in the community. I believe. How do you do that on the board of aldermen? Well, we actually do have two great board of education candidates running: Dave Knapp and Lauren Todd. Um, and I've spoke. I, I'm a good friend of Lauren's and Dave's as well. But Lauren, in particular, she really understands these issues. She's an educator herself. And, um, you know, w one of the biggest things she came up to me and said when she was running was, I want more diversity. I want the LGBTQ communities to be um, welcomed in Ansonia. And, and she's really pushing just for a more inclusive education system here in Ansonia. Um, so in terms of why I'm running for Board of Aldermen versus Board of Ed, I think Lauren and Dave are going to be a great team on the Board of Education. And I think they can handle that very well. And, and then, uh, David, in terms of, I mean, it's both, it's the first time both of you have gone uh, door knocking, door to door, like they say. What are you hearing from, from residents? Because one thing that struck me in some of the past interviews I've done with your counterparts in the other wards is that, well, there's my issues, but really, what, are, what, what am I hearing from people? So, David, what are you hearing from people when you go door to door? One of the most consistent things we're hearing is um, a lot of speeding. Great Hill Road, we were talking to a gentleman, Kevin McDonald, I think his name was. Uh, we were talking to him, and he was telling me how he goes to his mailbox and people speed by and, and tap him in the head as they're driving by. Mm. And it, it's pretty dangerous. So Wakeley Avenue, a lot of speeders, Westfield Avenue, Howard Avenue, uh, Franklin Street, um, just way too fast people are going. Um, also, the blight, um, getting a lot of people complaining. Now, the fifth ward, there's a lot of two family households, two and three family households. And a lot of it is uh, absentee landlords. You know, the landlords don't live there. It's a it's a cash cow for them. And they're not being very responsible landlords. They, they don't make sure that the yards are cleaned up. Um, they don't care who's living there. We, we talked to somebody on Holbrook Street. I wish I could remember the woman's name. But the house across the street from her, there was daily drug deals going down, gunshots, and we just don't need that in our community. We got to hold landlords accountable. Brian, are you hearing, I mean, obviously you're doing this together. You're hearing the same type of talk, crime, whether it be low level, like speeding or uh, dangerous uh, incidents that like David just mentioned. Yeah, I think one of the big issues, Eugene and Ansonia, um, currently, especially in our ward, um, is the focus so much on, on what the city's doing um, on Main Street, for example. And I'm not here to say what's going on Main Street is bad, but um, you know, there seems to be a, a, a kind of like a lapse where, where we live right now. Um, we have people, we knock on doors and they say, I lived here for 20, 30 years and I'm scared to go outside now. I don't feel safe in my own neighborhood. You know, we should be focusing on that. We should be focusing on what makes Insonia really great. And that's our communities, our neighbors and, and our residents. Um, they need support um, as much as Main Street needs support. And we need to make sure that our ward is not forgotten. We need to make sure that we go ahead and, and keep them safe. And then what are your stances on uh, economic development uh, in Ansoni? I mean, you're Wakely Avenue, right? So you're what you're you're from where the hotel was proposed all the way down uh, to the Derby border. Is that is that does that encompass the whole ward or do I, am I going too far? No, you're right. It goes right from Griffin Hospital, basically down to uh, to, to the um, the Shell Station, kind of by where the Seymour Line is, where Entertainment Cinemas is. Where was. Oh wow! Okay, so do you, do you think uh, the current administration uh, is doing a solid job in terms of economic development? And then, what would you two bring to the table uh, if elected? Well, I'm all for economic development. Um, like I said, I'm a very small business owner, um, and you know we we need that tax revenue in the city. 
but I'm also for economic development that makes sense for the community. Like, you know, that motel didn't make any sense at all. That's not the kind of economic development that we want. Um, common sense uh, economic development is, a, is where I think it's at. You know, let's make sure it works for everybody. And, you know, to, to go off of that, you know, I think what's important right now in Sonia specifically is, is getting, um, getting to the next level where we are um, in terms of industry. You, you know, there's a lot of companies like Amazon, Google that are looking for, the, for big buildings to fill with servers, to fill for data centers, for, the, for big jobs that are going to make, you know, potentially a lot of money here in Sonia and, and bring a lot of jobs to Sonia. And we should be looking at catering to those as well. Um, and I have nothing against high industrial. I have nothing against manufacturing. I think manufacturing is important, especially clean manufacturing, the way it's going on in Connecticut now. But we need to be looking at the next age, which is the, the information age, the one we're in now, where these companies want to expand. They want to grow their servers. They want to grow their, their data centers. Um, and we have tons of real estate here in Estonia that can, that can more than enough be capable for that. And then uh, one thing I want to ask about is there's been talk now for a few years about possibly merging the Ansonia and Derby school districts. I have not attended uh, the meetings to, to any great extent, so I'm not an expert on this issue in any way, but I'm wondering uh, what you've heard about that, whether it's something you could potentially support or are you hearing that uh, the savings aren't quite there for the city of Ansonia? So from what I understand, what I've heard from the last meetings was um, the funding in terms of in terms of Ansonia's cut of, of the the pie, so to speak, is we'd actually be being hurt by this by regionalization with Derby. Um, and, you know, just to be clear, I'm not against regionalization um, as long as it makes sense financially and it makes sense for the students and the teachers. Um, you know, one last thing we want is for the schools to merge and a bunch of teachers to be cut and we have classrooms, you know, 30 plus kids in size, you know, we wouldn't want that at all. Um, it would have to make sense both from a financial standpoint and a quality standpoint. And right now it doesn't seem like it's making sense from a financial standpoint. David, is there anything you wanted to add to that? No, I, I just wanted to agree with Brian. You know, I'm all for it as long as it makes financial sense and it makes sense for the prosperity of the students as well as the teachers. Uh, Brian and I are both um, endorsed by the American Federation of Teachers. And um, so we always have to look out for them as well. You know, it, it's got to be a, a smart decision for everybody all around. Okay. And then Brian, I wanted to, I wanted to specifically ask you about, um, I don't know how to phrase this, so I'm just going to say it. When I mentioned Brian Perkins to certain members of the Cassetti administration, uh, I'm exaggerating, like their eyes go wide and they start sweating. Uh, there is an on animosity out there. I don't know if it's like a, a personal dislike uh, between certain members of the Cassetti administration and you, but we did have a couple of years ago during the funding dispute with the Ansonia Board of Education and the Board of Aldermen and Consetti versus Phil Tripp. And there was all sorts of and Car former Superintendent Carol Malone versus uh, Mayor Cassetti uh, on social media. Uh, you were at least in the camp that was sort of constantly fighting with a with a Tony Mamone, uh, a Republican alderman, and it would go back and forth and back and forth. Uh, you know, maybe I'm editorializing here to the point where I would just step back and and, and go like pet my dog because it was it was it would be unbelievable, and the amount of negativity and and, and, and toxicity of it was I don't is like something I'd never seen before, uh, which I guess Facebook wants. But okay, so all that uh, being said, uh, how would you, if elected, work with Team Cassetti, who seem to have a personal dislike of you? Mm -hmm. Well, I think to answer the first part of that question is, um, you know, going back to 2018 with the funding dispute, you know, like I said before, I hold education in very high regard, and I think it's very important that our kids are properly educated. So it is something that's very personal to me when you take away $600,000 from an operating budget of a school and then try to sue and then lose a lawsuit and have to pay tons of um, penalties um, that is coming out of our pockets as taxpayers. Um, that's just for that part. That's why I took it, you know, very seriously um, when that happened. Um, to answer well, your question, uh, beyond that, though, do you ever think you got personal? Is there anything you said on Facebook that you regret, maybe personally attacked or called names or anything like that? No, I always try to keep it civil. I mean, there's one thing where I've always, I've always attempted to, to keep things, you know, on track in terms of the argument that I was presenting. Um, I never tried to belittle anybody or berate anybody in terms of 
their viewpoints versus my viewpoints. I just want to make sure the facts were out there and they were stated um, in terms of education funding um, and the laws, the Connecticut state statutes, that kind of thing, or, you know, being understood as, as they're written um, with the fine dispute. To answer your question about how I plan to work with Team Cassetti, you know, I met with Mayor Cassetti back in, in June. Um, I went down to his office and we, we talked for a little bit. And I told him, I was like, hey, uh, basically, you know, if I win this, this seat, um, you know, I, I do plan to work with you and I look forward to working with you on the board of aldermen. Um, it's nothing personal with me. I mean, as you know, uh, being Eugene Driscoll from the Valley Indy, I do write a lot of op-eds, um, you know, in regards to letters, keeping, letters, sorry, letters to the editor okay. in regards to keeping um, city hall accountable uh, for some decisions that they're, that they're making. And, you know, I feel like that still needs to hold true. So, you know, I'm not against anything in terms of tax decreases to the people. I feel like that's important, of course, and anything that's going to benefit the residents, I will work with them on. Um, but there does need to be a level of accountability and balance in the board of aldermen. And then how have you to turn, sort of turn my own question? You've also been personally attacked at length mm -hmm. uh, over the last couple of years. How do you handle that? And how do you not uh, respond? Well, actually, how do you handle the personal attacks? You know, I always take them with a grain of salt. I mean, you know, the, the people personally attacked me. They've, they've made up a lot of uh, things about me, especially, you know, I, I was in the middle of Afghanistan and I'm getting sent screenshots of, of people impersonating me, slandering me um, just for having a different opinion here in Ansonia. Um, it's one of those things where, you know, it doesn't get any traction, doesn't really concern me too much. It, you know, it, it really only bothers me if I let it get to me. It only really bothers me if I allow it to get to me, um, which I just don't, you know, I, you know, there's a, there's a good Mark Twain quote that says, you know, you, you don't argue with, with, with stupid people. I'm paraphrasing, of course, you know, they'll, they'll drag you down to their level and beat you with experience. Um, so I've just kind of ignored the, the personal hate um, that I get. I mean, if someone disagrees with me, that's fine. I have no issue with that. I would love to meet them, discuss things with them. That's not an issue. Um, but the personal attacks, I just, I, I don't give the time of day. And then uh, you know, like my last question on this subject, one thing I've noticed as just an observer, it seems like this go around, we're not seeing the cutthroat daggers out, poking each other in the eye on social media, particularly Facebook, in, unless there's now secret groups that I'm not watching, which could well, certainly we, be happening. We it a little bit, but yeah, I, I've surprisingly been pretty good at uh, holding my tongue and, mm -hmm. and not, uh, not not giving them anything to to chew off of. Yeah, is that like uh, cuz I mean like you know the, the I guess the evil part of social media that we're learning about is that you know it's unfiltered thought a lot of time and I'm certainly I've been guilty of of saying things even on the Valley Indie page that I regret 5 minutes later. Uh, do you think uh, we're sort of evolving in Ansonia to get away from uh, have we all realized well that doesn't really serve a purpose like David well, do you, you know Facebook loves negativity and political elections love negativity mm -hmm. um i'm trying to stay positive I, I'm, I'm trying not to feed into the negativity i'll let whoever's being negative and and foolish let them dig their own grave you know i'm, I'm just gonna I'm, I'm here for the citizens to give them their voice back and you want to attack me go ahead you know someday you're gonna look me in the eye and and, and you know want to shake my hand and say thanks for everything you're doing yeah it, i mean too Go Sorry, ahead, Brian. To, to kind of go off of that, I mean, the way I look at it is we're all community here. Um, you know, we have great people here in Sonia. Some people won't agree with us, and that's okay. Some people will will say things about us that aren't true, but that's the nature of politics, you know. So the way I look at it is, is you know, we need to rebuild the community, and, and we need to, to tighten our community more uh, back to and restore it the way it used to be. And I apologize for going off on a, on a Facebook uh, tangent there, but I do think it's important to address some of that because it, it's, it's been percolating. Issue. Yeah, it's been percolating for, for years, too. Uh, OK, th those are all my questions, uh, basically, but I want to throw it to you guys. If there's anything, David, you wanted to add or stress or a point to make that I haven't broached. Um, no, the only thing I'd like to say is and, and I tell people when we knock on their doors, they're undecided who they're voting for. And I tell them, listen, whether you vote for me or not, go out and vote. It's your right. It's your duty. Make it happen. You know, let your voice be heard. And Brian? Sure, Eugene. I just have two things I want to add. Um, the first one is, if you haven't already, please get vaccinated. Um, and Sonia right now, I believe, is, is trailing the rest of the Valley towns in vaccination rates. 
Um, so please, if you have not gotten vaccinated yet, please get vaccinated. If you have any concerns or if you're, you know, kind of on the edge about it or on the fence about it, Griffin Hospital has a great initiative where they're answering questions that people may have um, to, to kind of, you know, give you the facts about the vaccination um, if you're on the fence about it, but please go out and get vaccinated. And the second thing I want to address is kind of like a more global issue, I guess. Um, and that's self-care. Um, if, you know, if you're struggling right now or if you have a friend that's <coughs> struggling, um, you know, if you're, if you're thinking about hurting yourself or, or killing yourself, please get help. There's tons of resources available. BH Cares on Main Street. They can help you out. Call a friend. Call some family. If you have nobody, my door is always open. And then if, I, if I'm somebody who lives in the Fifth Ward, how can I learn more about uh, David Rhodes and Brian Perkins? Well, I have no problem giving everybody in the Fifth Ward my phone number. It's 203-305-7755. Have any questions, issues, concerns, call me. If I'm elected, that's more I could do about it. If I'm not elected, I could still raise, raise the flag and, and, and help out. You can learn about me on my website, PerkinsForInsonia.com. You can also go to InsoniaDemocrats.com, and we're also both on Facebook. All right, gentlemen, those are all my questions. I want to thank you so much uh, for first stepping up and, and running for public office. I mean, that's to be applauded right there. And then for uh, sitting 20 minutes and talking to my, uh, my goofy head. So I appreciate it. <laughs> Thanks, Eugene. We really appreciate it and hope you're feeling better. Yeah, thank you.